There are many things which show the millions of geological years cannot be there at all. Pressure in oil wells, which should have dissipated millions of years ago. The nickel in the oceans. Nickel is being added by rivers bringing it from the land. There's enough nickel in the oceans to account for just a few thousand years. Then there's the helium in the atmosphere. A known amount of helium is being added to the atmosphere every year. The amount in the atmosphere would have been produced in about 10,000 years. This problem used to be known as the problem of the missing helium. There are millions of tons of helium missing if the Earth is really billions of years old. There's no way that the helium can be accelerated to go fast enough to escape the Earth's gravity. Or at least there wasn't until those wanting to escape from the embarrassment of its being missing decided that the upper atmosphere must be very hot. So hot that helium can escape at just the right rate to leave us with the amount we have now. Well, perhaps you, like myself, were told that the higher you go, the colder it gets. Looks like whoever told us that was behind the times, or not into political correctness, or should we say, establishment correctness. So every piece of evidence for a short time scale gets ignored, or... If an excuse can be thought up, we get a secular humanist excuse for why it can't be ignored. But let's look in a bit more detail at one example pointed out by the famous mathematician and physicist Sir Horace Lamb. The Earth's magnetic field had been measured with good precision starting with the great German mathematician Carl Gauss. The field strength is falling exponentially. James Clerk Maxwell devised equations which analyse electromagnetic processes. These equations have been used to solve many engineering and technology problems and are some of the most useful tools of science. These equations are perfect for analysing the decay of the Earth's magnetic dipole field, the field which makes the compass point to the north. The dipole field is caused by electric currents circulating in the Earth's iron core. There are some multipole fields making magnetic noise. Nobody knows where this noise comes from. Electric currents lose energy because of resistance of the conductor in which they flow. The magnetic field induced by the circulating current fades away as the current decreases. Lamb estimated the probable conditions within the Earth. He found that any reasonable estimate leads to the conclusion that about 10,000 years ago, the current would have been so strong that it would have evaporated the oceans and a little further back melted the Earth. But to project back in time assumes the conditions on the Earth have always been the same. We know that's not true there was a great flood. Genesis 7.11 tells us, On that day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. Now, secular humanist scientists don't like that. But nevertheless, they admit that the Earth has been hit by a huge meteorite. NASA published their artist's impression of that meteorite which they estimated must have been 200 kilometres in diameter. That impact was big enough to smash the Earth's crust into tectonic plates and move them across the face of the globe. The establishment tries to fit that meteorite impact into Lyle's time scale, even though it completely wipes out the uniformity principle which created all those millions of years in the first place. The impact they themselves tell us about was not only big enough to destroy all of Lyle's millions of years, it was big enough to interfere with the magnetic field and the currents which cause it, because the Earth's axis was almost certainly tilted, and tilted quite a long way, as we'll see in another episode. This would have caused huge disturbances to the electric current inside the Earth, 
and produced eddies leading to huge multipolar fields and other magnetic noise. One thing is certain, in such a situation there would have been enormous dissipation of electrical energy and that would mean Horace Lamb's estimates of the maximum possible age of the Earth would come down to even fewer thousands of years. Of course, the secular scientists have another way of looking at the story. They say there must be a dynamo inside the Earth. This dynamo generates the current which causes the magnetic field. A dynamo needs a designer and a manufacturer. But the secular scientists say it just created itself. A dynamo needs a source of energy to drive it. They don't seem able to tell us what that source of energy might be. Something very similar happened when measurements of the energy of cosmic rays showed that secular theories about the universe must be wrong. We were told there must be cyclotrons in the heavens boosting up the energy of cosmic rays. A cyclotron is a very complex piece of machinery and there's not a shred of evidence for its existence, except in atomic research laboratories. And as with the heavenly cyclotron, not a trace of evidence has turned up for the earthly dynamo either. There's no evidence that the decay of the magnetic field, like the helium missing from the atmosphere, or the nickel missing from the oceans, or plenty of other things, means anything other than a time scale vastly shorter than we're being told. But how can the secular humanists carry on claiming that all the millions of years are still there, even though they were wiped out by that meteorite impact? Well, we are told they now come from radiometric dating, which they tell us is very reliable and very accurate. Let's look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.